Evening everybody, how's it going on this wonderful Tuesday, um, or possibly late Wednesday, uh, late Wednesday, late Monday, wherever you are. Uh, tonight we're going to be painting some Arcanauts. Basically going to be turning this test model that we did on the stream a couple of weeks ago um, into a proper scheme. Uh, on these dudes and hopefully get them into the army and sort of refine the technique that we're going to be using so I've kind of I had started them another time um, morning Tristan how are you mate so I'd started these another time um, and as you can see I started putting the brown on and just sort of gave up because at the time my hand was still in the thumb spiker and I just couldn't do detail. So returning to them now, and well, let's get going. So it is 6.34 a.m. from sunny beaches of Canada. Jesus, that's dedication. Thank you, mate. Thank you for joining. Just got to work. Okay, fair enough. That's early. Not the weirdest tackle I've ever got, Coach. Hello, how's it going? It's properly accessorized now. So basically, lots of, I like Death Guard Green as their sort of fatigues color. I think the green, green and like a bony white color really work well together. You're awesome. That's good, coach. I don't remember asking, but thank you. I asked Tristan though. When do I bedazzle my wrist? Uh, not at all, ever. I actually think that I need to take a step up. So previously I had the hand and the thumb immobilized and the wrist super immobilized. And so I've downgraded to this. Um, and I think this is not good enough, so. That's my job tomorrow is to go buy a better one. But in the meantime, I can paint. Oh, coach, you don't mean that. So as I was sort of saying there, Death Guard Green and the White Bone looks really good. Um, together, oh, I think anyway. And then sort of reddish leather for that sort of uh, contrast. Plastic splint built in. Yeah, Tristan, that's pretty much what I'm going to do. So it sort of immobilizes the wrist a little bit. Um, like not immobilized but supports the wrist a little bit I just want the, yeah that next step up but not quite I can't move half my hand that I did that I was having before the other good thing about this death guard green is that you can buy it in a spray so basically when I build my boats I'm gonna have sort of them separate so you've got the boat and then you've got the bit on top just leave them separate and so the bit on top gets sprayed rune on brass done and then the boats get sprayed the death guard green and it just sort of saves like they're such big flat things uh how long left with the splint at all uh at 
Um, I have some more ultrasounds and stuff first week of Jan. So. To be perfectly honest, I'm just super happy that I can use my thumb at the... Like, that's really... Because as you can imagine, painting, hobbying, working, doing up your pants, you need a thumb. <laughs> so, it's been quite a pain in the butt, but yeah. Alright, evening, uh, evening Jason, evening Michael, how are we? Does this wrist injury stop you from TOing? No, it doesn't. It does not stop me from TOing. But, you know, everybody else is TOing at the moment, and I don't really need to. Got Simon running stuff up here now. I've run some store stuff, but. Fang Brown next to go around and do all of the lovely um, straps and bits and pieces that these guys have. That means you can play more and get better at piloting over your... Shut up, Jason. <laughs> See you, Tristan. Thanks for dropping by, mate. think that the the Mornfang brown because it's quite a red brown without actually being red works quite well with the green as far as contrast goes and then when you throw a bit of a wash on it darkens down quite nicely anyway and you can pretty much just highlight it back up with the the Mornfang brown again so you don't need to go too crazy and with these guys like they're not going to be a concept army, but I'm also trying to get to a scheme that I can paint a dude, I don't know, 20 minutes or something like that. Which, as you can tell, is not going to be a thing at the moment. But I'm still just sort of sorting out how I'm going to get all this done. So... Do you think we're finally we're going to see the sort of end of year uh, FAQ sometime this evening? Masaka Koala, howdy. How are you going this fine evening? Oh, get a staff. Not working this evening. Or just cheekily uh, joining in on your lunch break. Break, dinner break, whatever you want to call. Working as. Yep, okay. I'd call this working. I'll vouch to you, boss. So. 
So you've lost faith that we'll get the FAQ. I think we will. It's. I think when we do, it's not going to be terribly drastic. Like I see people keep talking about that we, there haven't been tournaments, but yeah, we've had tournaments down here, and New Zealand have had some, and Europe had some. So there is some data out there. Yeah, I have seen people talk about KO being the one that's <laughs> KO being the one that's probably going to be adjusted, readjusted, toned down, whatever you want to call it. That's cool. I've got OBR. I need to learn how to play. Apparently, so I'm okay with that. Seraphon need an adjustment too, yeah, but they need a different kind of adjustment, I think, rather than just points. It's just one or two things that are slightly abusive, so adjust those and you'll be fine. Not sure if I have painted the correct pieces here. I think I've made stuff that quite possibly should be like armor or ceramic, the leather color. I'm going to have a look at a picture of this dude painting the G Dub scheme, and then I'll see if I decide if I'm going to paint the other boot like that. bring up whatever I'm painting on the screen beforehand but I didn't today because I decided at the last minute what I was going to paint company. this guy is just a guy that stands around Yeah, okay. I can see where I've stuffed that up. Thought it was just normally just after Christmas, but I would take it today and would make it's normally in the weeks before Christmas. Um Jason, so Yeah, so on this leg, I painted what should be pants and a, like a kneecap guard in my leather color. So that's good. I'll have to go back in and fix that up. Just, it's hard to tell because there's folds in the fabric.
picked up Mortal Realms stuff for my kids today. The this week's issue and last week's issue, because I wasn't around my news agent when that dropped. Can't argue with five dread size harridans for twenty bucks. Howdy, how's it going, Chris? It is indeed funky music. Well, if I'm not allowed to play what I um, if I'm not allowed to play what I want to play, we'll just take whatever the royalty-free music place uh, site gives me. <laughs> Yeah, Jason. Um, uh, Harridans is this week. This week's issue. Break is at midnight. That sounds wonderbar. I just have a um, news agent around the corner from work that holds them for me each week. Make sure that I get them. Although that does suck when it's like, um, I think the next issue is like two paints and uh, and a battle like a paper battle mat. So that's gonna suck. Um, that issue. But, um, oh, well. it's the price that you pay for being able to just go and pick stuff up when you need to. A three by three Lego brick of a photo of Riley to be framed. Oh, what? I am not sure I understand, Chris. Call me daft. Just Google photo brick. I can't, I'm streaming. Is it a photo made of bricks? So when you assemble it, it. Three by three. I will Google it after the show. I accidentally put too much water into this. Mornfang brown, and now it's super thin. It's almost contrasting. nine one by one tiles which you put individual logo squares onto for each pixel oh okay that sounds like a really good gift idea and a terrible terrible jigsaw at the same time
so many straps on these dudes. Maybe 20 minutes a model is unrealistic to, as, as a final goal. But we'll see. Let's go through and keep painting them. Still also trying to figure out what is the best, like the most efficient color to undercoat them. Like currently they're undercoated in like a sandry dust and then I just dusted them with um, wraith bone for the white armor. But if that's, if that's not the most predominant part on the model, it's not an effective way to do it. So is the more effective way to do it with the Death Guard green spray, just like the boats. So quite possibly. I'll have to get some and try it. But then you have things like the the Thunderers, which are all armor or mostly armor. Like they've got the big plates and stuff on the front. So that like maybe that's more efficient to spray in the off-white color. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Many experiments await. I am going to switch to a smaller brush though. There's virtually water over that side of the palette. So I assume, Chris, at the moment you're like building the Lego tile thing, like putting all the different colored bricks on. Is that like your Yoda thing that you showed me? split and it's no good to me okay that's a bit better just easier to get these small buckles and stuff with uh, small belts rather Yeah, exactly the same, just on a bigger scale. Lego squares and some small little diamonds. Yeah, cool. Well, that's a very cool gift. bandings maybe like a dark gray or something oh gosh and we'll switch back to the bigger brush because we're going to paint the gloves just in this base brown it's super thin so I don't need to worry about going over that symbol I don't even know what color that symbol is going to be yet, so. It's going to be a gold, the brown will help. This thing is super quick. Just touch that band up there. So are you hobby and coach? What about you, Jason?
painting flayed men. It's a, definitely a sentence that needs context. <laughs> so it's the oh yeah the um, Game of Thrones game. I know that's not what it's called. Song of Ice and Fire or something. Building your plan B. You're hobbing for the Gold Coast tour tournament. Oh, yeah. Gosh, I'd even forgot you were there, Tyron. You've very, been very quiet. You hadn't had a go at me in at least 10 minutes. Kidding, of course. Boo. <laughs> Are you working on, like, Lumineth or something? That's because that's what you were talking about uh, the other day, wasn't it, Michael? Lumineth or something? Yep, cool. Lumineth Realm Lords. I like it. You're still looking at that scheme we were talking about? The, um... Like the dark one? So I've just got... Yep, cool. So I've just got one of the bases that we built on stream a couple of weeks ago. It's just in Mechanica Standard Grey. So obviously we're going to do... I point with the small line. Still confused on bases. Fair enough. I think you really kind of have to have. So, um, for context, looking at like Realm of Shadow bases, um, you know, and Dark Lumineth Realm Lords. Um, I think you really need to to probably do one of your guys just to like in rough color blocks to then play around with bases because you don't want super dark bases and super dark guys on top and have them sort of meld too much, I think. Unless that's the effect that you're going for, but I, I just don't know if it'll work. But I imagine that you're probably um, working on that at the moment. Like, working on the um, on the actual guys, just colour blocking them out. I'm going to turn that music just down a touch. Um it is getting slightly loud. Righto. So, um, what I've got here is one of the bases that we built on the stream a couple of weeks ago. So, with the um, with the fencing from the Garden of Morkit and some paver. And now I'm kind of going for dark, dark, uh, so shyish um, bases. See, the miniatures themselves, they're going to be fairly warm because the, like, Death Guard Green is a warm green. I know that sounds weird, um, but it's like a very uh, warm green. you got the warm tones with the, the leather. The, you've got cream in there, so having sort of coolish bases is going to set them off really nicely. So the plan is to have sort of like a bluey-grey uh, texture in here and some sort of corroded... Um, uh, brass cut bronze sort of um, fencing and stuff on the bases and then just working through how I'm going to do this paver but I think um, it can kind of be like a different tone of grey I don't think that's going to be an issue so if we go for you know your blue greys are on the outside your cool greys 
and then sort of the more browny gray beigey type of stuff in here maybe like a rakarth flesh or something like that so so i've just got to put, pick this out from over here one of these works and that's our gold for the for the railing so i'm just going to stipple the oh gosh that needs a good shake uh, just going to stipple the uh, rack our flesh onto that paver. Uh, meanwhile, in the chat, uh, that's what you're working through now, Realm of Shadow with dark skins. Yeah, it's like a... It's a hard thing. You kind of want it to be dark and shadowy and mysterious, and you also want some sort of contrast between your bases and your minis, because otherwise they're just all going to meld into each other. Um, so... Stippling a bit of rack our flesh on here. Just to give it that beigey base that we want. What? You mean Kano flesh? I have no idea what you're talking about there. Sorry, Chris. That or it's a joke that I have forgotten. Sorry. We've got. I think I, think I can see Ham in the uh, in the chat. Ham Solo. He's a, a basing wizard. I played against his ogres um, on the weekend, and I really loved his. He had like orange wasteland bases, and they looked really good. Might have to steal that idea for something one day. Shaking the crap out of this belt so gold because I obviously want the the gold and stuff on the bases to be different to the the brass on the models Sometimes you think you're funny, Chris, but you're really not. <laughs> Look forward to the response to that one. Just loading up this. The good thing is that with the just spraying the base with the Mechanica standard grey, that's pretty much the base grey that I want anyway. So I can put some wash down over that before I do some dry brushing. And it doesn't matter if I get some of the uh, soil colour, I guess, if you want to say, on these little fence palings and stuff, because you kind of want it to be a bit weathered in. and a metallic in that pot but we'll see all right so i'll just let that dry in the meantime our mourn fang will have dried on these guys i'll go through to the next step which i'm going to make let's have a look at our 
So this is our test model here. I think, yeah, that's about there. It's the optimum viewing distance. He's super dark because the only thing we did was um, we painted the base colors and then just uh, slapped on an Agrax wash, which was really just to see how the definition would work. Um, but we've got large amounts of like the off-white um, and then the Rune Lord Brass. Um, so, and then a little bit of silver there, so we'll just see. I reckon we might have to do the off-white next. The only issue, of course, with this is that if they made a Rakarth Flesh Spray, that would be very useful. But anyway. Weirdly chunky rack of flesh. Bit of water. Right. -o. Just going around. Fixing up my mistakes, so I've got the old mate's knee pad here, which I uh, which I accidentally painted brown, so that's okay. There are a few sprays. Uh, dried bark, yeah, dried bark would be super good for um, terrain. I think Australia just needs to be, uh, like, we need to get, like, is it Halfords or Krylon or things like that? People talk about, like, Krylon, Camo, um, and Krylon Khaki or something like that. They're primers that the, the states have that like, are, like, cheap, like, Bunnings level um, spray paints, but they do them in all sorts of, like, beiges and greens and browns and stuff, which would just be super useful for models. Uh, whereas over here, it's really hard to find, like, a matte brown spray that isn't a hobby product, because you don't want to spend $30 a tin to paint a ton of terrain or something. That's just crazy. And uh, what did we do? The head on this dude. And we did it. Yeah, so it's off white. I, can't, I couldn't remember if I was going to make it gold or not. I think it might have been gold and then we switched it back. I'm not sure. Got by gold, I mean the brass. So. Yeah, I think I would. Uh, Definitely love a Rakarth Flesh spray. The um, This pretty much how I'm painting these is pretty much an adaptation of how I was going to paint my Nurgle. So basically come up with the color scheme on the on a Lord of Plagues that I painted. I really liked it, but then I didn't sort of want to paint. Basically with Black Kings, they're almost an army of characters as far as detail goes. So, like, didn't really want to paint an army of characters. And realistically, I only like a couple of models from the Nurgle range. Um, so I'd, I'd sort of come up with this colour scheme, which I well, say come up with, adapted it from, like, the Death Guard. And um, didn't want it to go to waste. So now it's my KO colour scheme. But yes. I would love, love, love a um, like a flesh spray.
and Incubi Darkness. That was a great spray. Of course, I have to come back in and paint the pant legs. <laughs> Death guard green before he, this guy gets his wash step. What did we do with this guy? On the shoes. Oh, we're in brass around the bottom of the shoes. Interesting. Okay, cool. Thanks, Tim Blue. I get it. It's a football reference. The Mechanicus Grey. Um, spray paint yeah I've got a couple of tins of that because I bought it to do all my like because all my OBR stuff starts off with that spray um, as the first step so I've got I think when I came back into stock at my local store I bought two tins so I'm like for sure I'll get halfway through this project and run out but I managed to paint like spray all of it with one tin it's empty now but yeah so it's super useful paint and it's a good mid-tone if you're painting if you just want to paint from like a rather than a colored spray or black and white it's super good mid-tone to work up or down um also hello uh fnq flavor town oryx so i'm assuming that's far north queensland flavor town oryx which doesn't help me know who you are but localish Ah, oh, g'day Tim. There you go. Look, look at that. I could figure out where you were just from your avatar that contains where you live. <laughs> Thanks for joining. I think this is the first time you've ever jumped on the stream. Thank you. Has a Herald shirt too. Yeah, he does. He has um, one of the first three of the Herald's t-shirts that we gave out because we did the competition about telling us about your favorite uh, favorite Warhammer moment. And we had, I think it was Tim and Jason Harris and Seth Cook. That's right. So, yeah, you were one of the first to have one of those shirts. I'm actually wearing a garage hammer shirt this evening, which was sort of the first ever sort of podcast supporter merchandise I think I ever bought. Oh, it's good that you were able to join in, Tim. Thank you. Got quite a few people in the in the stream in the chat tonight. It's awesome. Thank you. The 
and you all get to watch me paint Arkanauts, which is loads of fun. I managed to buy a box of Arkanauts at my local store. Uh, not at my local store, at another store in town that sells Warhammer. And they must have had some stock that they were trying to get rid of. Because I bought a box of Arkanauts and um, got the Underworlds team for free. So, it's a good deal. And so I've already got the Underworlds team sort of in the KO army as various things. I'm going to use the, you know, the, the chemist as a chemist and... You know, there's the dude who's loading the, loading the, um, uh, what do you call it? Like the volley gun, you know, he's in that kit crew as well. So he's going to go into a unit of Arkanauts, like just as a cool miniature in that unit. Plus the, you know, there's the Arkanaut who's got, you know, in a cool pose and things like that. Um, so I've just kind of got the original war, war bands have spread throughout the army already and then I've got it again now that I can like chop up or convert or whatever because you know there's a thunderer in there why don't I cut his arms off and put you know one of the spare thunderer weapons on there or something like that just to be able to switch him in and out and things like that so any that's right townships there and they want to give me free stuff no, I think it's fairly, I have to be, get there at fairly interesting times. Um, I think they had some of the new Primaris stuff with something else attached to the back of it. Some, something Firstborn for 40k. And I'm pretty sure I got the only sort of AOS bundle. So. Yeah, they just clearly want to get rid of the stock. Or whatever so go in there from time to time they also have a really good um vallejo range um so it's always worth going in there to check what they've got there um they have lots of, like because it's a um it's like a model uh train slash rc car shop like it's more of a, a hobby shop than a tabletop shop like a game shop um, they have the model air uh, and model color lines, whereas Battle Station locally doesn't have those lines. Um, so, if you're after a certain shade or whatever, you go and check it out. Uh, there was a question asked in here, sorry, 60 Arconauts in the 2000 point army or going more ship heavy? Uh, it is a mixture of well, what I've written slash discussed with people is a bit of a mixture of both. Um, it's got the it's got the ironclad. Um, it's got a bunch of thunderers, ten thunderers, and six of the bubble boys, and an ironclad. Um, I think it is more ship heavy now that I'm thinking about it. A couple of um, gun haulers. Because um, when I first started, first sort of decided I wanted to do the army, I sort of wrote a list around the gun haulers because I think they're cool models and I already had one. Um, and then I went to Battle Station and they had the Start Collecting Box, which is an awesome deal. Thunderers, Bubble Boys, and a gun ship. That's great. And the Warcry Box, which has more, guy, um, more engine riggers. And more thunderers. I'm like, cool. That gets me ten thunderers and six engine riggers really quick. So, and I've got um, Bugmanson in there as an admiral as well. Um, although I've sort of in some revisions to the list, I've dumped the admiral and um, uh, put in a Stormcast character on on recommendations from from Michael in the chat. So. Because we were chatting about um, about the list and sp spilling a bottle and things like that, so he made some suggestions that I really enjoyed. So I'm going to give them a try. Um. <laughs> so. 
Sorry, forget that I just talked. Ah, done. 63 questions for AOS trivia. Why 63? That's an odd, odd sort of number. Unless you have seven rounds of nine questions or nine rounds of seven questions. Or three rounds of 21 questions. It's seven realms, 21 questions, three rounds. There you go. That's the last guess. Um, well, having played against KO twice on the weekend, it's actually not like either of the lists that I fought against. So that could be interesting. Um, so the the two the two lists I fought against, one was Thring, and he had like 20 Iron Drakes or something like that. It was crazy. Um, like, um, he would just bridge 15 Thunderers and 20 Iron Drakes and just shoot whatever. And he only had a couple of um, Endron Riggers. And then the second list had um, an Ironclad and 10 Thunderers and like two 10 to Arcanon Company and then two sixes at Endron Riggers and stuff. So it's like, I played two different lists on the weekend and mine is different to both of them. So I'm kind of happy about that. 21 questions, three rounds. Technically I have five rounds of 21, but if my plan A fails, you'll only do three rounds. Ah, I see. You're all prepped and stuff. Um, we're just going to... I've got some Terminal Stone behind me. Do I? Tyrant Skull. Uh, no, there it is. Terminal Stone. Just to um, stipple onto this. So, I didn't realise that you were doing a quiz, coach. Bring this up tonally so it stands out. And then once we put washes over it, it'll change. Which I might do now. So we've got Drakenhoff Nightshade to go over the top of So we're just going to go over the top of this soil sand here, give it a nice blue tint. This is basically how I um, did the bases for my squigs. It's quite I quite liked them. They were kind of like a cold blue underground sort of thing, which worked well with the bright colours. And then we dry brush that with like Ulthon Grey. And then um, I'm going to go in with um, Agrax and do the tile and the gold in a minute once the Draconos dry. You'll have an interactive quiz. Okay, fair enough. Okay, there we are. 
tell you what, I really like Rune Lord Brass as a base paint and a spray now. Like, it was a good good move that they did. Um, it's in here. Tis a, tis a very expensive spray though, not gonna lie. As are all of their uh, newer uh, metallic sprays. I should have put a Death Guard green spray on my G Dub wish list for Christmas. Oh well. Lesson learned. Just have to get my local to order it in. And that bit there should be brass. Yeah, they aren't damn expensive. I don't mind though, like if it can say, so with the sprays and stuff, it's all about time saved, especially color sprays. It's like, how much do you value your time? And I have this discussion with my wife all the time about how much I'm willing to pay for something versus how much I'm willing to pay to, like how much I'm willing to make it. But like if I value my time at what I charge, my personal website clients which is you know 55 bucks an hour um if i can spend 50 dollars and save more than an hour i'm already up so being able to spray all of the um all of the what are they called endrins endrins for the um, uh, for the KO dudes, for the boats and for the engine riggers and stuff like that. If I can just do all of those, bam, in a spray and save myself sitting there and painting them all by hand and trying to get make sure I get it flat and smooth and whatever. And then being able to then use that spray, you know, to wash it down and come back and maybe dust it or whatever and use those for different projects. They, they do save you money yes i know that like if you want a black you can just go and buy a you know black from bunnings and it'll do the same job and very rarely buy chaos black i will admit that one but like for the colored sprays i just think they're such a time saver over hand base coating stuff that they're definitely worth their money but that's a very much a your mileage may vary kind of thing. Like that's not going to be for everyone. It's just yeah how I value my time. Plus, I think you would be hard pressed to go and get a Rune Lord brass coloured spray from Bunnings that matched properly. It's kind of why I like the Retro Rita Armour one as well. It's always useful. around the bottom of this dude's boots.
Really, the standard I'm going to be happy with for these guys is that basically put all these base layers down um, and then uh, wash and then just like one rough highlight. I can't enough to. Ah, oh, ham, ham, ham. That's not very nice. I was nice to you on the weekend, mate. Why are you being mean to me now? How are you, man? Thank you. It's getting there. Truth is out there. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. I was, um, oh dear, um, I was talking up your uh, ogre bases before him when we were, talk we were talking about basing, and I was talking up your wasteland sort of bases that you had on the weekend. What's the flavor of the month today? KO, can you get? That's what we're working on. Same as we were a couple of weeks ago. Odd how projects take a while and come back and now I can use my... Now I can use my hand properly. I can actually paint things properly. It's very useful. Shut up, Magro. Don't make, <laughs> don't be the first actual person I banned from my channel. <laughs> Cheers, him. should be fairly easy to replicate on a bigger scale like on boats and stuff I've sort of talked a, a bit tonight about using the sprays and things like um, uh, you know using the death guard green spray to do boats with and stuff like that make an extra interesting down under Sigma episode yeah where we discuss the reasons why Yeah, get an air I have an airbrush. It's there somewhere. I haven't, but I haven't brought it out since um, Cancun terrain last this year. Jesus, still the same year. I use it for the boats. No, I specifically picked the scheme so that I don't have to use it for the boats. Um, where, there was somebody in here who said hello. Oh, Dan. Hello. How's it going, Mr. Wesley? How go your mighty pyramids of vegetables today? Nine point five, coach. That's quite a large nozzle. Uh, 
I used to have nozzle clogs all the time and then I started using um because I was just using flow improver and then I started using thinners as well and decent paints and it kind of worked quite well and Vallejo primer can get in the bin I just that clogged all the time If I was doing a colour that wasn't the green and the white, I would probably have to use a, a um, airbrush. But it's just like rattle cans. It's just easy. I don't have to sit there and clean a rattle can. Or I have a dedicated space for it. That's half of the thing. I hate setting it up and clean and packing it away. Otherwise, I think I'd use a um, airbrush more. You need it on your paint desk. Yeah, probably. It's fairly inefficient, so just there, and which you can only just you can't see on the camera. Is like stacks of tubs with armies in them so probably just like get rid of those and turn it into an airbrush area but I also have computer screens just in front of me which is not helpful um, last time I checked you know airbrushes and computer screens don't mix very well yeah I've almost sold so on a sonic cleaner um, because you can do jewellery and stuff in it so I'm, you know, I might have one of them in the new year for cleaning jewellery and not at all stripping minis not at all uh, 9 inch then I'll be airbrushing my Stormcast in the year yeah but you're doing Knights Excelsior you crazy man like you have to like I feel like you'd have to airbrush that to make sure it's smooth. Get that white armor smooth. Can confirm. I don't know what you're confirming. Got an ideal one. It's super cheap. Yeah, cool. Thanks for the follow. Is it Guesty? I don't know. I think it's Guesty. I think that's how you pronounce that. Thank you for the follow. Monitors and airbrushes do not mix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fair point, Chris. They do not. I, um, had to switch over the monitors that I um, had given Soph because they had uh, paint flecks on them from dry brushing. Yeah, only person to get it right in a while. Ah, well there you go. Look at me go. Guessing people's names. Welcome to the chat. How are you going? You doing some hobby as you're watching along or just tuning in? Background noise. That's off to the post. <laughs> there you go, Dan. There's some uh, some kudos to you. 
painting some GSC, some Gene Steeler Colt. And good. Yeah, man. We are good this evening. We're just painting up. Enjoying the use of my thumb for the first time in a few weeks. So we're celebrating by painting up some KO. I've got other projects I need to get back into, but they're not really stream friendly. Um, so just kind of warming up the painting hand with some KO. Oh no! Got some silver on his glove. How goes the 3D printer, Clint? It is in the same position it was three weeks ago before we were talking about the hot end. So um, it's just a thing that I haven't prioritized at the moment. I'll get there. I'll put it on the to-do list uh, after my um, after the guinea pig hatch my wife's waiting on me to build. Should get on with your KO too. Yeah, that's fine. Gene Steeler Colts. They're sweet models. I really like them. What's Gene Steeler Colt stuff in particular? You wouldn't have to be painting the sweet bikes or anything, would you? They are really cool. Clint's Zoo is growing. Uh, the, the zoo, we have... We have less guinea pigs now than we did a week ago, so that's good. Um, we had a handful of guinea pigs, and then one had babies. Um, you're painting the quad bike now. Awesome! Uh, yeah, the... Um, we have guinea pigs, and chickens, and birds, and fish, and it really is a zoo here which being the tolerator of animals in a house full of animal lovers uh, is very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Can you do a whole army of just the... just the bikes for Gene Silver Colts? Uh, and mainly the kids, right? Uh, no. My wife is the, the animal tragic, and then my son sort of gets it from her. Yes, you can. Ah, oh, sweet. That would be cool. That'd be cool, an army full of, like, bikes and quad bikes and stuff. But alas, I have KO to paint and many other projects. I already have space wolves in 40k to that I'm ignoring, so really can't take on any other bloody projects. <laughs> no, no. Um, so I'm going to do the wrappings around this guy's feet in black. My army painted black is. somewhere there. My army painter black is stolen. Oh dear. Where did that go? There it is. You've got Black Templars and Golden Boys. Uh, painting to one side and tree folk and KO. All right. Night coach. Uh, cheese for coming online, but good to have some hobby background noise to paint space rings too. Tim, I am on every Tuesday. Um, I think I've missed one because I was deathly ill. Um, but yeah, Tuesdays at 8.30 and then extra ones. Got a couple of public holidays coming up, so we'll have I have some more, maybe, if you all are good. Just 
So, where are you from, Guesty? Are you an Aussie or from overseas? UK. Well, there you go. That's cool. We get a couple of UK folks in here. We have Dave and um, we got Dan, who's in the chat currently. Maybe still, perhaps, Mr. Wasley. It's, like, it's a slightly odd time, like mid-morning for UK folks, so. Yep, you're still here. Haven't been distracted by produce. Are you still, like, cleaning up Stormcast models, Dan, or planning out stuff? I wonder if black was the right choice for this. That's very strong. On the hunt, on the hunt for star soul maces. What is this? Twenty sixteen. I remember when everyone was making Star Soul Maces out of the Decimator axes. They were just like tape. Oh, careful now. Don't understand you, Stormcast. But you take like four of the Decimator axes and glue them together or something like that. People used to do that. Um, I think I've just got to fix up the pants on this dude and then we're ready for some wash. But I will probably quickly take a break and get new water first because I've done a bunch of metallics in the water I've got. So we'll fix up his pants and we'll go from there. New Stormcast are just um, old Stormcast, but with robes. Though I only use GW paint. Wait, I just went looking for some army paint and stuff before. Uh, I use mostly GW ham. I've got a bunch of like army painter ones that I use for. S <laughs> it's, it's all good. Um, that I use for specific jobs, like Army Painter Matte Black is just a thousand times better than a bad and black. So, um, and I've got some random greens and stuff like that in Army Painter that I like. Um, I'd really like to just get the entire set of them and just like switch over to them for a project and just see how I went. Um, and I've got some Vallejos that I use for different things, like um, they have colours that work really well. Warlord Purple is a colour that you can sort of get in Vallejo that doesn't have an alternative in G-Dub. Um, like I know people rave about Scale 75 and I've got a handful of those, but I don't, I don't, know, I don't tend to use them much. They just have, they have a weird consistency and I just, yeah, use what I'm comfortable with. Which is probably ninety percent G dub, because I can go to the store and buy it. Whereas, um, um, whereas with Army Painter, I can only sort of I either have to order it or buy it at Irresistible Force, uh, which is why I bought some paints there uh, on the weekend. I'd like to switch to Tamiya one day. Um, okay. Like they're sort of like the more the modeling paints and stuff, are they? Is 
Is there any particular reason, Dan, like that you'd like to switch? I think it's interesting that like lots of people who paint well and you know and and good prolific painters tend to have a range of colors that they use like a range of brands because different brands do different things does does it make it easy, uh, difficult when they're like doing some sort of paint uh, tutorial and they're like oh it's this from this color this brand and this from this brand and this from this brand and you're like I don't want to buy 14 paint ranges just to be able to paint this mini there's a Tamiya shop right well convenience I suppose is a good reason Now, the question is, did we get any paints on the green everywhere? Also, I have good results from the clears and the weathering stuff. Okay, yeah, that's fair. People talk about the clears in terms of, like, blood and stuff, don't they? Like, the Tamiya clear red and whatnot. It's not that convenient, it's in Japan. <laughs> True, now that I consider the context of your statement, yes, yes, that would be less convenient. Sorry. I do feel like that's a bad reason to switch then. touching up some of these colors before I throw the wash down. See you, Tim. Thanks for dropping by, man. As I said, we're here every week, pretty much. You can always come along and uh, join in. going through the various colors and touching them up because I am not super accurate plus this Mornfang brown was a bit see-through uh, quite transparent on the first run through so some of the bigger flatter areas on like the boots and stuff are a bit bleh and the gloves so just touching those up Dan has bought a box of Blight Kings ah uh, yeah, well, Mr. Jolly was talking about Nurgle, wasn't he? Um, I was listening to... Uh, oh, yeah, see you, Ham. Back next week to see how the hand is... Oh, no, I can't. Shut up, Ham. <laughs> see you, mate. Um, yeah, I was listening to... Um, Never, Nurgle's one hour you've never felt the urge to yeah I felt like that Jason and then I I don't know one day I just was like I really want to paint a Nurgle model and that's when I bought the Lord of Plagues and painted him up and I had and that kind of like tick did that box tick that box the urge to do that army so um yeah I was listening to episode 60 of the two piece today Dan and the most Mr. Jolly moment was when they were doing their top five for 40k for top five 40k models um, and uh, basically Dan rattled off everything that was released this year then fell into a fit of giggling about Rambo shooting somebody with a bow like so random 
Guesty. I saw Midwinter Mini on his Nurgle Demon stuff and I'm so glad to doing it too. Oh, that was with the eyes, wasn't it? That was creepy as. That was a creepy vid. Yeah, the big eyes. It was an interesting idea. You got the Underworld's Warband and no real drive to pay them. Yeah, that's fair enough. I'll probably get get them at some point. Now, you shouldn't say that. Always skip it. Righto. So, I'm just going to quickly switch to the Be Right Back thing. Because um, I'm going to go switch out this paint water because it is... Like, I can see the metallic flakes floating around in it, which is not going to be conducive to a good wash on our models or the bases. So I'll be back in, like, two minutes. I've just got to go and wash this up. So I'll be back in just a jiffy.
back. Sorry, that was a little bit more than a couple of minutes. I decided I would make myself an actual cup of coffee. So, as you can see, two very different cups, coffee, and paint water. Two di completely different colors, and they're going at different pace and places on the table as well. Because I'm not silly. Righto, what are we doing? We're washing. Water looks too easy mistakeable for tea or coffee. Um, I don't tend to drink sparkly tea or coffee, so it was not going to be an issue for me. So, all right, I'm just going to go. Nice fresh pot of Agrax. Basically, just going to douse this dude in Agrax because that's the way we roll. Are you aiming for a certain list with this K, are we? Um, yeah, we were. I was talking about it before. Um, basically, it's got um, a couple of the little boats, some of the um, engine riggers, a bunch of the thunderers, um, chemist and stuff like that. So. Basically, just sort of a, a multi focus KO army. But at the same time, I think I've got probably have options like I'll have extra Arcanauts than what's in the list that I'm currently look, aiming for. So that, you know, you can run variant builds and things like that. That's what you want. Um, kind of like what I've done with the um, with the OBR like I've got a list in mind and I bought that list but along the way I've sort of picked up other stuff that you know is not a bad idea to have I'd love to run just a, an army full of, like, essentially ships. You know, a couple of gun haulers and, like, a frigate or an ironclad or something like that with just, like, maybe some thunderers in it. Like, token, token dudes. And then, I feel like that would be quite fun. Try and get some detail into that edge and around that one just make sure I've gotten all of the surfaces of this guy so these guys aren't going to be parade standard they'll be good I'll call them tabletop plus, but basically something that I can paint fast and effective and get on the table, which is pretty much the level that I sit at most of the time. That's something I'm happy with. People looks good across the table. I'm happy. Do have to get myself an ironclad yet though. So but every time I go to get one, they um, go out of stock. And then when I'm not planning to buy one, like this week, it's probably not the week to spend money on hobby. Ironclads are in stock everywhere. So slightly frustrating. I 
Maybe I should just should just grab one. Like I've done all my Christmas shopping. I've got some presents to wrap, but pretty much bought everything for everyone. It does look like my Christmas shirt isn't going to turn up though from Tee Public, which I'm very sad about. It was a great, a great pun Christmas shirt. And I ordered it like six weeks ago and it only just landed in the country. So I don't think it's going to get from Sydney to me in like two days, which is unfortunate. What was the pun? It was um, a picture of John Claude Van Damme with a Santa hat holding a present and it was John Claus Van Damme. So I, I quite liked it. Uh, don't forget your warp lightning vortex. Yeah. I have other plans. The vortex is like the... The super common one. So I played against both the vortex and the bridge on the weekend. But have other other ideas that I've you know, from discussions. That's the thing though, like, is KO going to be um, as good as it is now, post, post FAQ? Comet, yeah, that's literally what I was thinking about after our discussion tomorrow had me fairly convinced I think after watching like after playing against a KO army on the weekend and he threw out Vortex and then I got rid of Vortex that was it it was done I was like oh. and then I was able to do my thing and very nearly one, but yeah. But what you were, you and I were talking about with the encounter and stuff was a good idea. Right, oh, so now I just have stuff waiting to dry, which is always an awkward position to be in on a stream seen a good carriage on comet conversion that was one of those entrance big round engines made up as the bomb that's quite a cool idea hmm. right now, so while they're drawing I should probably start painting someone something else right I will build this model here. Right, so this is a Dreadblade Harrow that I got from Mortal Realms. Did have two, but gave one to somebody who needed it. And you only really need one in the army. <sighs> Hi Dave, you're the second person to make that joke, so 
it's 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 an old joke now. You don't need to uh, to make it anymore. Also, welcome and how are you? Yeah, well, I was actually going to buy, like, three copies of the magazine to use the steeds for something else, uh, but decided not to. But I also don't have any instructions, so that's going to be interesting. But I feel like you kind of build the dude after you build the horse, so... Uh, but yes, the hand is better, Dave, to a, to an extent. So I still got the thing, but I can use my thumb, which means painting. And I am super super. If there is a wrist injury in play, then you must make that joke. It's the rule. <laughs> yeah. So you finished work, that must be nice. I still have, well, right up until Christmas Eve to go. I'm hoping that we get to go home early on Christmas Eve, because if we don't, that will suck. I feel like people don't need to uh, start having a website built on Christmas Eve, so surely I can get away with going home early. So we're just building a Dreadblade Harrow at the moment while we're waiting for some wash to dry. What are you painting, Dave? On this fine Tuesday. They're painting for you. You're making lunch. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, look, uh, the scheme is the, um, the green and off-white one that sort of did the test model for a couple of weeks ago that you were on the stream for. I think we had the off-white and green and then the, like, the black and pink. Um, the black and pink will come up for something else, I think. Um... So we've just gone the green and the off-white scheme. I'm just sort of doing two, um, two Arcanauts to just kind of figure out what I'm doing um, as to, in terms of what's being painted what, because um, they're the least expensive models in the range, and I have extras that I can sub stuff in for. Um, yeah, so and then just doing a test base. And then while we're waiting for the wash to dry and building this, but I could easily be building a, um, if the wash is still wet after I finish building this, I'll build the Knight in Cantor that I want for the list as well. As an ally. Just slot him into the base. Oh, that didn't go well. There we are. 
Yeah, I think that black and pink that we were doing that I tried on the KO for the other alternative scheme uh, will pop up somewhere. I've got some other ideas for it. really do love this model. Dreadblade Harrows are just so dynamic and cool. They do a cool job in the Nighthorn list as well. Folks who follow me on Twitter may have seen I um, put up my son's Nighthorn the other week. Last week sometime. And he really enjoyed painting the two Dreadblade Harrows in there. Came to me with the idea of doing like the, making the mains and the fetlocks and stuff, the, the sort of green fire and stuff like that. So it's, it, um, you know, firing his creative um, synapses in his brain, which is really good. Pink for the Snippy Claw Demon God. No, I don't really want to. I don't really want to um, do Slanesh, to be honest. I think pink would be a good thing. Like, it's kind of a color that you don't see often in things like Legions. Um. I think it would be really cool to do some Legion stuff in pink or just there are a bunch of other armies that I think would benefit from using that pink a bit more than the KO. Not that there's an issue with painting pink KO. It's just I've just would like to use the color somewhere else. And I try not to do, um, and I try not to repeat colors too much. Like I painted every army benefits from pink. Well, it's a good spot color on stuff. I'm not going to lie. Um, but like I spent, 15 years painting um, purple and blue legions before I sold it off to um, start it all again. Basically got sick of looking at the old paint jobs alongside the new ones. Um, but that, you know, that was lots of purple and blue. And I don't really want to revisit purple and blue for a while. So, just doing some different things. Fire Slayers with pink. Yeah, I've seen them. I've seen them like with pink, like bright pink or blue crests and things like that. That looks really interesting. Like it's very different from the normal reds and oranges that you get. Almost like punk or alternative Fire Slayers. On the test model, I did do the eyes of this dude pink. Maybe that's where we bring that pink into this army. I'm saying pink. It's like Warlord Purple from Vallejo, but it's pretty pink.
Two of them with black skin and pink crests. Poptastic. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, uh, that's definitely something. And you have an equally different pop color for like characters and stuff because let's face it like ko are one of those armies that's notoriously hard to play against because everything looks the bloody same although i have seen people start to like make sure that all their characters are standing on rocks or something like that so that they right, stand out a little bit I feel like I need to get the Underworld's Warband now, Dave, to test that scheme out. Thanks for that. Mull them all with banners, right? The buff they give out on the banner. Write the name of the rule of the buff on the banner, just just so you're being transparent, but at the same time, not immediately making people snipe off the plus one to hit dude or the, you know, six, five up hair save dude or whatever. Just call it, you know, Grimnir's Honor or something like that on the banner. Did, it, did the Underworlds with black skin but it's not on Insta though yeah nothing you want to show me is on Instagram you keep having to put it up I can't talk I don't, I don't put anything on Instagram really uh oh he's done my fast rider man is done Sorry, my phone is just going off. Just making sure it's not an issue, like an emergency or an issue or something. Oh, no. Okay, so that's dry. What do we got here? Yeah, still some wash drying there. Right, so we might just work on this base a little bit. Turn our stone to just bring that stone's area back up again. Too much, too much. Alright, and then we'll throw grey, which I know is up here. Because Elliot steals it for his night haunt. I'm just going to dry brush. So, oh, it must have been Fenrisian grey, I think. Let me just get that.
least he's stealing my beers. He he's eleven, um, and I don't have beers, so I would be worried if that was the case. Yeah, but you're right. Pinching pinching my Orthwan Grey is probably if, if that's the extent of the troublemaking. Uh, probably okay with that. dry brushing so we've got the base here just dry brushing the the soil area the fin region grey Should be just here. No, in the drawer again. I do. I do need to get better, but move my paints over here when I'm streaming. Because I don't always paint here in front of the machine, in front of the computer, which is why keep having to go back and forth. So just taking the nanoc oxide and just popping it into the divots and stuff around the bottom. As you do with this sort of stuff. And always, you know, the less is more mentality and things like that. And should we do an alternative color base room? I don't hear anyone yelling at me. Some sort of grey or something. Or should we just stick to black? Black it is. And it's a little hair. Vince's. Any color is right as long as it's black. Yes, well, I I do think there are times when other paint base room colors are fine. Like an Eschen gray or something like that does work sometimes. Or brown. But black kind of does the job. I also like triggering vents with pictures of stuff with green base rooms. So, but that's so that's just me being mean. Just sending in pictures of my old school fantasy army project with my green base rooms. My Age of Sigma tankard. Getting in, getting in theme. Even if I'm not painting Sigma stuff, like 
Stormcast yet. And people call you a troll. Well, you are, Dave, so let's not deny it. Is it just me or is Lauren Forest darker than Deco Green? It is indeed. That's not going to work. Is it Lazy and Green the next step up? Oh, you got me what that is. Yep, at least in Green. Now, we just, I don't want to sit here and highlight every piece of cloth because that is just like edge highlight every fold or whatever. That's just going to drive me insane and take forever. So, I'm just going to sketch in the highlights. We'll see how that works. Sort of fill in the spaces where it's close to the edge of the leather and stuff, and just painting in big bands of the green color. So it's not super precise. But it seems to be doing the work. Not sure if you can see that in there. It seems to have washed all the colour out of this thing again. I did have it fixed, but it seems to have gone back to the way it was. Um, yeah, absolutely it has. Um, but oh, it's really hard to tell. That's annoying. I have to fix this up again. Um, let me just see if I can do it live. Uh, but... I think it's reset my camera. Yeah, you can't really see the where I've put the new green in over the top of the old green. You very much can in real life, so I'm gonna to have to adjust the camera settings again. But um, basically just sketching in so we've got this big bit of imagine that's the dark green and I'm just taking the light green and then sketching in this bit through the center So you can see the variation in that. That's basically what I'm doing with the, so where there's Death Guard green on the model, just basically painting some Elysian green into the bits in the middle. Gives it some pop on the model without being super precise. And um, from across the table you would not even notice it just you just get that light green and the dark green for the contrast and it looks fine which is exactly how this is meant to be painted And 
like basically painting the super exaggerated folds of the cloth with the Elysium green as well. You've sent me an Instagram link, Dave. Is this to your fire slayers? Okay, yep. Black with like, is it tattoos? Interesting, very interesting. bone wall paint oh yeah yeah now that i'm looking at that properly yeah that is exactly what that is they're decked out for halloween There was a single slab painted that way and a white dwarf donkeys ago or stuck in your mind. Yeah. It's funny how stuff like that just sort of sticks with you and then you find a way to to pay homage to it later or to do your own variation on it. I almost think at least in green is too close to Death Guard Green. They are coming along. Oish. I think if I get paint on this brace, I'll be in trouble on the wrist thing. Trying to uh, just figure out how to line up this off white without completely going too crazy. Once again, just sort of sketching in the highlights. I think I might have too much water in it. It's not really playing how I want it to. I 
I'm just hitting all these high points. Especially around the beard on the face. There's so many sort of big ridges that if you just sort of hit those with the, the white, it just looks so much better. It's not super hard either. Except when you paint the backpack by accident. So I said my aim for these was about 20 minutes each. We're now two hours into a stream for these two and I'm not done yet. I think that 20 minutes each might be slightly unrealistic. just really quickly smashing these highlights in it's doing the job you can definitely see that there's some variation in the off-white there and in the greens Which, once I finish, fix the color balance on that camera, you'll be able to see better going forward. I might just pop, take some photos of these and pop them up on um, Insta and Twitter for people to have a look at, just to see what the go is. So the question I didn't ask you before, Dave, was what's for lunch? What are you making us? I say knowing that it's nearly 11 o'clock here and it's not at all lunchtime.
No, vaguely where all these highlights and stuff are going. It's actually going fairly quick. So maybe 20 minutes a guy isn't actually that bad once I figure out how it's all going. But 20 minutes is just a rough guideline. Basically quick and effective is what I'm chasing. We've got the oh, oh, oh just bugging up my Mornfang Brown by mixing some black into it. That's really good. Yeah, just going back in and highlighting or basically just touching on all these leather parts. Yeah, I think it's gonna have to be lighter than that. Righto, it's the next step up from that. Scrag brown or something. shiny pot of scrag brown That's a bit better. All right, so we've got some scrap brown here. I'm just gonna switch to a smaller brush for these highlights. Still a very nice warm reddish brown. I'll just sketch these in too. Boop, boop. Once again, we're not sort of trying to edge highlight every surface I just want to put some really broad stroke highlights on and kind of see on that pouch how we've got the dark and then the sort of lighter orangey brown which when it dries it's not going to be as bright but we're just kind of going through so that the Highlights look super bright now, knowing that they will darken down. And we're just big, broad strokes because that is how you get stuff done quickly and not take 17 years to paint a model. which, don't get me wrong, it has its place, but it's hard to paint armies like that. At least that's what I, how I feel about it.
just huge broad strokes like on these boots there's like panels just one big swoosh of the color through them and they're highlighted like they look super effective from especially from like a distance that's really where I try and paint for so it looks good on the table really especially and with this KO with KO I reckon if you sat down like I saw on Twitter there's like six there's like a ridiculous amount of rivets on something like the ironclad you can't sit down and highlight all of those and not go insane um, so just a little bit more water in here and to a point and just broad strokes again So we've got buckles in here that I'm not painting, but I'm just going to come in and grab those later. Um, because they are going to be gold and we want to be able to just quickly do these big broad stroke highlights, layers, whatever you want to call them, without having to worry about it. So we're just going to go back in and do the buckles and stuff like that. run the brush sort of along the top of the straps and then they are they work super good and then we've got metallics we've got some other areas on them now I'm not super happy with like the I don't think the Agrax did a good enough job on that brass just seems to be super light still might do another go I think Just, yeah, just seems light. So we'll grab the Agrax in a second. Let's do that now. Where is it? There it is. Okay, did my music stop? Would you believe it did? Okay, let's get that going again. All right. Let's get a bit of this Agrax on here. Do another 
just want to bring it down just a touch so that when we highlight it up it's a bit nicer just want a little bit more definition in this brass stuff so going through anywhere I've got brass I just want to darken it down. So of course make it more difficult to do things like end runs on the ships to try and get these uh, washers to sit flat on those, but we will see. Not everything has to match. It's just nice when it does. back over the silver metallics with the iron hand steel something not too bright but you definitely see the difference just sort of quick and then along the edge of the cutlass Take some uh, excess water that's sort of just sitting on my palette. And just do the edge of the cutlass. Might be a tad too watery. It's like a bizarre silver metallic wash. could argue that you could probably hit it with the brighter silver but I don't think it's really necessary guy mm. 
And I've got the, the buckles and stuff to do. And highlights on the brass. And we also got the black bands around his legs to do. So I've got some Dawnstone. I should do the job. Pop some of that down. Get some of that on this tiny, tiny brush. We just Trying really broad strokes again. They cease to be grey at the, uh, black at this point, and then our grey. This sort of stripping, but grey is nice and neutral. It's fine within the context of the car scheme. Always hit it with a bit of a black Templar or something like that to put the definition back in between the grey and darken it down a bit, which I think might need to be done because I've been a bit rough there. It's coming along. So, uh, where is it? Room or brass? There we are. Make a pile, pile of that. Just smash out these high points again. There's very little definition in that. There's almost no contrast still after two Agrax washes. Which is interesting. I also need to paint in these buckles. sure this is mixed properly. Ow. I should use the other hand for that because that hurt. It's not all bad, it's fine. It does need to be this mechanical eye needs to be that though. Well, probably these dudes at the end probably should have done these while I painted the face the first time. Let that dry for a bit, and I'm just going to get the next steps. 
which is the Warlord Purple and the Black Templar to do those. Some tufts. Just take this black Templar. I'm just going to paint it onto these straps around his ankles. Where I did the grey highlights, but I probably was just a bit overzealous. And they went outside the lines a little bit. But just cheating using contrast and just getting it to put the definition back in the straps. Darkening the grey down. quite like Black Templar like that, painting it over grey to give you some good highlighter black or grey. And we just need to do Agrax over those bits of extra runa, uh, rune, rune Lord Brass that we just did on his face. Just there, and there, and there. I'm just going to apply it to the back end of this blade as well. That. Yeah, that wash is pretty much already dry. It's got some Warlord Purple, which is a fantastic purpley pink color. Basically, the alternative. I'm not sure if you didn't watch the first stream that we did with these KO. Uh, this was one of the alternative color schemes, was black and Warlord Purple. So, still got the touch of Warlord Purple in these guys just in terms of the eye. And there we go. Pink eye and like a pink bionic eye. And then I think with that he's pretty much complete because everything's really done. You have to figure out what to do on his shoulder though. Pink eye. Yeah, thanks Dave. Thanks for being incredibly grown up and mature. Once I figure out the rune that I'll paint these guys, use for these guys, I'll paint that on there. Don't know whether it'll be black or white or whatever. 
But I think that's pretty much done. All I've got to do now is break him off the base. And I'm going to put him on this one. And then we're going to place the tufts. So we're just going to... Like that. So easy. I have some trusty super glue. Ah. Figure out where the best place for him is. Yeah, that paving, that bit of stonework isn't actually quite helpful. Alright, something like that. Done there. Your moderation bans me from writing a Muttley style laugh. I don't know why it would do that. It's probably it's probably like on auto moderation or something like that. Because I haven't set anything up. might do two tufts because one tuft is not enough. There we are. I'm kind of happy with that. Looks a bit funny from the back, but his feet weren't flat on the other base either, so. Righto, so I'll take a photo of that and then pop it up on Instagram and Twitter, probably. And I think, like, I'm fairly happy with that standard. And then now the goal will just be to... Um, You know, it'll just be to get quicker at that. So, you know, Death Guard Green Spray can only make it quicker. Um, especially for models like this. And if only they invented, if they brought out a Rakarth Flesh Spray. That's my Christmas wish. Rakarth Flesh Spray, because that would just make stuff like the Andron Riggers and the Thunderers really quick. So, oh, the uh, Valhalla Blizzard is missing with the white. Uh, balance so righto now that that's done I think um, I'm gonna call it a night there we're just about the three hours um, still got to go to work tomorrow because that's just how it is unfortunately I will have to hit you up Dave about what that equivalent is because um, I'm sure once I put a agrax over it's probably not gonna be terribly different so um, what's the what's my Instagram? Uh, it's just Clint dot Mallet. I think it's just Clint dot Mallet. Um, can't remember if it's Clint dot Mallet or Heralds of War. Twitter is Heralds of War, um, and Instagram is uh, Clint dot Mallet. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, I'll probably go take a photo of that now. The big white box, that way, that way, that way. That you can see there is my light box. So I'll go set him up in the light box and take some photos uh, and put him up. And uh, we will see you all next week, if not before. Like, I'm uh, at this stage not going anywhere for Christmas. Uh, so, you know, Boxing Day stream or something like that is probably on the cards. Paint up 
some of the goodies I get for Christmas, perhaps. Who knows? Anyway, until then, um, I won't, if I don't talk to you before, have a good Christmas and be safe, everyone. And uh, see you all after the festive season. See you later, guys.